Why do aquarium fish actually fall ill? How can we cure them? We don't need to be biologists in order to tackle the issue. A lot can be worked out using our human understanding, with fish as well. We humans fall ill first and foremost due to stress. There are currently a lot of studies on the topic, burnout and so on. Although fish do not suffer burnout, the problems are actually the same. Only the stress factors are different. In this aquarium, we can see the stress factor number one, namely overpopulation. If we have too many fish in it, the fish become stressed, and this affects their immune defense system. It is exactly the same for fish as it is with us. This means a lot of fish in a small area increase the stress level, and the animals become more vulnerable to disease. Some germs are always latently present. Just like there are always a few flu viruses in our air, this is normally not a problem, we get by, our immune system can deal with it. But if the infection pressure increases, if there are too many pathogens present, if the stress becomes too great, we fall ill. And the same applies equally to fish. There are other stress factors. For example, if the water values are not right, if nitrite values are high, or if there is nitrite at all, if the water hardness is too high, or if the water is too soft, if the temperature is not right. The fish come from tropical waters. This means the natural water temperature is between 24 and 26 degrees. If it is colder or warmer in the aquarium, this applies in both directions, we have a stress factor. Or diet, like with us humans as well. If we always eat just fast food, we get problems, because our immune defense system is weakened. We need fruit and vegetables, whether we want them or not. Although fish don't need them, they do need a balanced diet with sufficient vitamins. A very important factor, vitamins are contained in the fish food. We must not leave the food open for too long, though. The food should be used up within three months of the pack being opened. If you buy a big tin of food, and the food has still not been used after a year, this is far too long. Buy instead a smaller tin with the full vitamin content, and when it is empty, the next one is bought. The big tin might have a price advantage, but the quality of the food reduces over time. It should be used up within no more than three months of being opened. These are the main stress factors we have in an aquarium. On top of this is the stress when relocating the fish. This starts when you buy the fish. The shop assistant should know how to catch fish correctly. This means he should work with two nets. He takes a bigger net, and using a smaller net, he carefully drives the fish into the bigger net, takes them out with his hand underneath, and places them into the transport container, or into the bag. All of this has to take place with little stress. The fish wriggles in the net. After all, it doesn't know what is happening. The wriggling damages its mucous membrane. Fish are slippery because they have a mucous membrane. The mucous membrane on the scales protect the fish against infections. When the fish wriggles in the net, it damages its mucous membrane. And the moment it damages its mucous membrane, it provides an area that can be attacked by infections. This is a big problem when relocating fish. Therefore, catch the fish calmly, without any stress, and relocate the animals correctly. And we have a product that helps the fish to settle in, JBL Asimol. It contains protective substances colloids and a lot of vitamins. It is a cocktail of health for the fish, and you pour it into the aquarium when you add new fish. With this, you reduce their stress significantly. There is another interesting phenomenon. A man buys fish in a pet shop, from an aquarium, from a fish tank in which all of the fish look healthy. He takes these fish home with him, places them into his aquarium, and then his fish fall ill. Who is to blame? The new fish? The following may have happened. The new fish carry a few germs, a harmless cold, white spot disease, and bring these into your aquarium. For your fish, these are unknown pathogens. 
causing a big problem, because your fish are not immune to the new pathogens. This has also occurred many times in human history. Think of the Spanish who came to South America. They brought with them pathogens that were mostly harmless for themselves, and in doing so they wiped out whole tribes. Or for example, flu. It has killed more people than any other disease. The Indians in South America did not know flu viruses, were completely unprotected, and were wiped out. Exactly the same can happen when you take fish from the pet shop back home. The pet shop owner is not to blame. Fish always carry a potential risk of disease, like we do when we cough. We release a few germs into the air, but the infection pressure is low. However, if you spend half an hour with 20 carriers of the flu virus in a lift, the risk of you falling ill increases significantly. It is similar with fish. The setup of your aquarium also plays an important role when it comes to fish diseases. If you have a lot of hiding places in your aquarium, the fish are less stressed because there are territorial conflicts. Sitch lids are very territorial. They have their patch, which they will defend against other fish. Everything is fine, so long as every fish has its patch, its territory. However, if the aquarium is too small, there will always be some fish which don't get a patch or territory and suffer from this. They get bitten, become stressed, and if they are not bitten to death, which can happen, they fall ill. The setup of the aquarium is therefore very important. The infection pressure plays an important role. Let's imagine a fish has white spot disease, and you can see a small spot. A small spot means a ciliate. This ciliate has a very unpleasant characteristic. It will leave the fish at some point, fall to the bottom, where it will form a capsule, and within the capsule a thousand new swarmers will form. This capsule opens up like a puffball, like a mushroom, and a thousand swarmers come out. This thousand will then infect the other animals. Now just imagine, we had one ciliate, and this became 1,000. If we now have 1,000, which in turn form capsules, and in turn form a thousand new swarmers. If we have a white spot disease in the aquarium, which infects the fish with several spots, the infection pressure will be immense, because the number of pathogens plays an important role. A UVC water clarifier, by the way, helps to keep down the number of germs. If the fish do fall ill, we need a medication. And there are medications for almost every disease found in the aquarium, and which are also very effective. They are available over the counter, and you don't need to buy them through a vet. With these medications, you can effectively combat diseases such as white spot disease. It has, as I have just described, a life cycle. And in this life cycle lies the danger. Many aquarists find the spot on the fish and say, oh, he's got white spot disease. The diagnosis is often right. However, then the right reaction is needed. The aquarist buys a medication, adds a dose of the medication, and the next day he looks again and says, oh, the spot has gone. Great, I can stop the treatment. That would be a big mistake, because the disappearance of the spot only means that it is no longer on the fish. It has just fallen off, is lying on the bottom, and is forming a thousand new swarmers. This is why it says in the instructions, I know no one ever reads instructions, I don't either, but you really need to act in accordance with the instructions, that you have to add doses of the medication on the second and further days. Always continue to add doses, therefore, until the treatment has been completed, because you don't catch the pathogen in all of its development stages. Unfortunately, you can only combat it effectively in the stage when it is floating in the water. On the fish, it is protected by the mucous membrane of the fish, and the capsule on the bottom is resistant to medication. This is why it is really important to read the instructions, and this is why there are two numbers on the packaging, a smaller and a bigger number, the 2,000 liters. This means the medication is intended for 2,000 liters if it is to be used on one single occasion. Sounds good. 
However, if you use it on multiple occasions, which you should if you use it correctly in a treatment, we only find 250 liters. That is the difference with these two numbers. Therefore, please always consider how big your aquarium is, and then use the smaller number as a rule. Let's go through the treatment again. How can we react? We notice that something is wrong with our fish. This does not always need to be a clear set of symptoms. It may also be that the fish is not behaving properly, is listless, a schooling fish. It is staying on its own, near the surface of the water, something it does not normally do. I have a swarm of neon tetra. One or two aren't swimming with the others, but have separated. This is abnormal behavior. Perhaps they are not eating either. This clearly means that something is wrong. Most probably they have a disease. And then I need to take a really close look at the fish, and I find, although I could not see it at all at first, that there are perhaps small spots on the fish, or a fungi, a worm infestation, something that can happen. Then the question is, what exactly is it? On JBL's homepage, help is available in the form of an online hospital. We have been collecting photos of fish diseases for years, and make these available to you. You can go through these, or use a good book on fish diseases, and then hopefully make a diagnosis. You can tell, that looks like my fish's disease. If you are not sure, it becomes a little more difficult. However, you can normally tell that it is probably one disease or the other. Next, you buy the appropriate medication and do a partial water change before you use the medication. This reduces the number of pathogens and lowers the infection pressure. Next, and this is very important, always turn off the UVC and pour in the medication in the right quantity. Right quantity sounds simple, but things often go wrong here. Why? Because a lot of aquarists do not know how many liters their aquarium holds. No offense meant, but the calculation length times width times height seems to be too complicated. And if you have a triangular aquarium, or one with a curved front glass, I admit it is not very easy. Find out how many liters your aquarium holds, because the dosage of medication is important. Too little does not help. Too much can be a problem. When you have added the dose of medication, there must be no activated carbon in the filter. If you are using activated carbon anywhere, it first has to be removed, because the activated carbon will remove the medication from the water. You add the dose of medication in accordance with the instructions and add further doses until the treatment has been completed. You never stop prior to this. Think about your if you are prescribed antibiotics by the doctor, and he says one tablet in the morning and one in the evening, hopefully you don't say to yourself that you will only take half of this and stop after three days. Here, it is exactly the same. See it through to the end. When you have got it under control, this only means that the pathogen has disappeared. You have, for example, successfully combated white spot disease. But we are not yet finished because the medication will always have a negative impact on your filter system. We therefore need to inoculate the filter again biologically. With JBL Filter Start, you can inoculate with the right bacteria and improve the water values again because we need good water values. When we have achieved this, we want to remove the medication from the water again. We therefore next do a partial water change and place the activated carbon back into the filter in order to remove the residue of medication. Please do not leave a medication in the water. This would be a mistake. Although you dilute the medication with the water change, there is still some present, and you may possibly generate a resistance to the medication. This would be very dangerous. This is why you need to to do a partial water change and place the activated carbon back. The medication needs to be removed completely. And then you start to feed up your fish. Varied diet, regular partial water change. Not too much food, the right food. Then it will work with certainty. Fish diseases do not need to be a problem. The most difficult thing with fish diseases is the initial diagnosis, establishing what disease it is. And our aquarium theme world, with its section on fish diseases, should help you here.